Hello, everybody. Grace and peace of the Lord Jesus to you guys. Um, recently, I've had more comments coming up on my slavery in the Bible uh, parts one and two. So I feel like I need to uh, put more scriptures up there and speak a bit more on the subject. Um, when talking about slavery in the Bible, the Bible is clear that it's wrong because God brought the Israelites out of slavery from Egypt. And in fact, when you look at the reasons why God kept them in slavery in Egypt for over 400 years, you go back to the near the end of uh, Genesis, and um, God is saying that, look, he promised this land for, by Abraham to his descendants. Yet, factions came in and took over the land. It wasn't quite his yet. They were in there. And so they were taken in slavery, yet God could have wiped them out. But he said that, that the Amorites' sins have not yet fully reached their peak. So he had to watch his children suffer in slavery because it would be immoral for God to judge these people because their sins were not fully reached. And uh, we see the wisdom of God's justice here in uh, in in the, these passages. And so he watched them in slavery for 400 years because he could not yet use them to judge those people that were um, in the Canaan, Canaanite area and the Canaanite tribes. Um, yet when they did come out, Finally, um, the Jewish people wanted to practice an eye for an eye, and so they were allowed to have slaves, but with um, huge limitations on what they could do. They couldn't for force them to war work uh, seven days a week. They couldn't force them to overwork. Um, and then, ultimately, when coming to Christ, and in that time, it's time to abolish this group. We also understand that, that God permitted to that, them to have slaves in order to rebuild their society because it was 400 years out because of what their enemies did to them, selling them off into slavery to Egypt. And so what they're doing is repaying their enemies for what they did to them. Many people have a problem with that in the scripture, but this was a law for the Jewish people that they accepted. Or sorry, the Isra uh, Israelite people. But when we look at Galatians 4, and I have a whole bunch of other verses in parts 1 and 2. So you might want to check that out when you get a chance to. Uh, uh, we see that, uh, starting at verse 1, what I'm saying is that, that as long as there is a child, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, he is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. So here, quite simply, it's showing that, that slavery is, in fact, wrong. And that's why it said that, uh, in the context, that it's not good to be a slave. It's good to be a son, a child of God, not a slave of God. Uh, moreover, when looking at 1 Corinthians, sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 8, we see, we know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and ir irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for adulterers and perverts, for slave traders and liars. You see that? And for slave traders, putting it in the list of all these filthy, abominable acts. And so... um. Uh, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that confirms to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which he entrusts to me. Also looking at where Christ said, you know, treat others in the same way you would want them to treat you. 
And then, eh, anyways, in parts one and two, I have a lot more to say on that. This is just new things uh, in the scripture dealing with this issue and this topic. Um, because the Bible is so clear that for a time when the world was very barbaric, um, when they conquered these tribes, they allowed them to be kept under as a part of their culture, but as um, second-class citizens because of what they had done in the past um, for allowing such uh, for the Amor Amorite people allowing such hideous behavior to go on among them but we also know in the scripture when looking at the books of the prophets um, particularly with um, uh, the book of um, let me just get it open here. I believe it's Amos and and uh, Micah. That God holds to the same standards, his judgment for Israel, um, as he does the rest of the world. And even according to the Bible, that people who preach God's word are on the day of judgment are going to be held to a higher standard than regular people because they've been teaching it. So they have to be very sure that their doctrine is sound. That way they're not misguiding people with the words of God. Because, it, as Christ said, it's a double-edged sword. You have to be very skilled to be able to use a double-edged sword. Because you could swing it around to, to try and, uh, and destroy your enemy and cut yourself with it. You have to be a skilled warrior. You have to know how to use it properly. And this is why it uses that analogy. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and take care.